Next up, offensive lineman, Nick Malone. Question for Nick. Greg? So, Nick, I don't want to say you're old, but you've been here a while. But So when, when you've been here this long, what do you concentrate on in the spring? I think it's, especially in the spring, I think it's more the the little things. Like, like you said, I've been here like a good bit. So uh, learning from people. I think it started with Colton McKivitz, watching him from a young age, definitely in the developmental squad, definitely helped me. And then as I've gone through Zach, Doug, Yates, Quay, and uh, Wyatt, I think it's I think it's more the little things in spring that can help. Does it feel any different because, I mean, it's your last one, but also because you're really pushing for a full-time starting job? Uh, I don't I don't see it that way. I kind of, my mindset is I'm 100% all the time. It doesn't matter if coming off the bench as a backup tackle, big tight end, none of that really bothers me. I kind of think of it as full steam ahead. Talk about your transition from a walk-on to a scholarship player, and what would your advice be to somebody that's trying to walk in your shoes? I think one of the best advice is getting as many reps as possible at, because I start I didn't start playing at offensive line that much. It started at special teams. It went from tight end on field goal to uh, shield on punt to backup tight end to backup tackle, and then now in the, the role of actually playing. And I kind of I think it's consistency is kind of the the big word to use. Just keep going. Sounds like you tried to find a role. I got to find a role on this team and figure out. And then once you get your foot in, build from Arizona. Was that kind of your approach? Yeah, kind of like like that. Especially being able to play offensive line example is playing every position. Kind of if they need somebody to go in, you you were right there, ready to step in. There was no split second thinking, thinking of who they need. Like I kind of just took that role and kind of put myself kinda in. Kind of create value for yourself, right? Exactly. Value anywhere I could be. Yep. As you're trying to find yourself, there are obviously up days and down days. Describe the difference between the two, and you know what, what's going through your mind on after a good after you mm -hmm. feel like you're moving up, and maybe they're not making any progress. I think it's uh, especially in the O line. We talk about being flat line. There's no there's no bad days. There's no really great days. It's being like that word I said, consistent and. Uh, being an offensive lineman, you have your bad plays, you give up sacks, you point of attacks. But when you have those great blocks, it's a great feeling. So you kind of have to find that mixture of both and kind of not get too high and not get too low on yourself. What's this line like without Zach and Doug? And can you guys be as good as you were without them? I think we can be better, especially now. I think we've taken the steps. And where we're at now, we have a lot of experience coming back. but. We'll definitely miss them for sure. Doug and Zach led the led the room, led by example. But I think, uh, kind of like I heard in a previous one, it's not a rebuild; it's a reload. You guys have seemed to have taken that to, to heart a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've heard multiple guys repeat that phrase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's it like blocking for Garrett Green? How does that make you better blocking for a quarterback that can maybe get out of trouble uh, a little easier than others? It's uh. It's pretty cool. It's he you can he can always fix our mistakes and we can fix his and him being able to move kind of helps our situation, especially when it's we have to sell run. They think he's going to run it and it just it makes our lives a lot easier when he can be more mobile. Nick, you mentioned that the spring is an important time for the little things on an individual basis. What are some of those little things that you've kind of emphasized these last few weeks? Uh, I think of mine, especially uh, running off the ball. That was kind of. One of the things I lacked in last year is kind of at the point of attack, not not running off the ball. And I think, especially now, we're running the ball pretty heavy. And I think, like I said, the little things I was able to build upon that and do a little better, especially now in the spring, and it'll show in the fall. And you mentioned that shield on the punt team, right? Mm -hmm. You've been doing that for quite some time, right? Yeah. Um, why? That doesn't seem fun at all, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a it's not a pretty position. But like I said at the beginning, it's where my role. I wanted to play. It didn't matter if it was an offensive line, field goal. It didn't didn't really matter to me. I just, being on the field as much as possible and doing what I can do to help was kind of my big thing. Um, it was prior staff, but they, they told me that that was like a volunteer thing. They could ask people to do it, but it didn't really matter unless you wanted to do it. Did you volunteer for that? Yeah, I was. it started uh, early in the year last year. I wasn't on it as much, but once uh, – I can't, it was before Pitt, I believe, but I kind of just took that role and kind of stepped in there like, you can do it. And I was like, I, I know I can. And 
I went in and did what they tell me. Um, it seems simple. It's probably not, right? Um, oh. <laughs> tell, me about, tell me about some of the adventures back there. If there's high moments, low moments, have you ever been hit with the ball, have you ever whiffed? Just what, what do you remember? What would oh, you like it, to forget about that experience? It's uh, it's kind of it's seeing another grown man running full speed at you. It's, it's not very fun, but with our schemes, we're kind of moving around, so they're not able to get a full rush on us. But some of the highlights, it's when you – in the back, when you're in the back, you hear the thud of the kick. And some of those moments where you don't hear the thud and it's taken a while, it's like, uh, what's happening? And especially that was at uh, Oklahoma State, uh, the rainy game. You, I'm waiting for all of you hear the kick, and I didn't hear a kick, and I turn around and I see him chasing for the ball. So that was one of the crazy moments. You've played left tackle, right tackle, pretty much everywhere in the offensive line. It, does it help to concentrate at just right tackle, one stance, one set of plays, or has it been beneficial that you've played everywhere? I think it's been beneficial to play at all, but I think being able to, especially this year, focus more on right tackle, it's a little bit more helpful, but I think in the grand scheme of things, like knowing what everybody has to do kind of helps my game as well. For one other question here about moving from being a walk-on to a scholarship guy. Was there a person or somebody that, that you talked to or helped you along the way that kind of helped you understand, okay, this is what I got to do to get where I want to be? I think Coach Moore and Coach Brown, we always had one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings of like, like you said, being a walk-on, you're kind of not noticed yet. You got to work your way up and everything. And starting with those meetings at the beginning, it was kind of like, oh, you can keep going. You got this, whatever. And then as time went on, it's like you got a bigger role now. You got to step in. You got to do this. And expectations kind of changed during that. But I think it's the mindset of just the consistency piece that was with that. So it was your coaches. It wasn't another player that you talked to? It, or It was players like – I never got uh, – the big thing about here, like, walk-ons, you don't get treated as walk-ons. It was kind of everybody, like, from, like I said, Zach, Dante, Yates. Uh, Quay was a big one with me. We kind of were in a role together. But it's kind of it's kind of all for one, all for all. Well, I mean, the gold standard here was Rich Bram. Yeah. That's the name mm -hmm. everybody – did you ever have an opportunity to talk to him at all a little bit about well, how he uh, – He came every once in a while when Noah uh, Braham was getting recruited. I talked to him every once in a while, and it's – uh, when I talked with him, it was kind of like the mindset piece of you got to think, you got to have that chip on your shoulder. Being from West Virginia, being from Morgantown, you have to kind of outdo everybody. So it's kind of the, the mindset of you got to go. Like just like I belong, uh, they overlook me, I'm going to prove them wrong, that type of thing? Prove them wrong was the, the, big, the big thing. Big yeah, thing. yeah. Not just here, but, but anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Was there any point early that – you may have wanted to toss in the towel, or I would. I wouldn't say toss in the towel, but to the previous question, that low time you and every football athlete has that low point. But giving up was never really an option. But it's kind of you know where you're at. You can always build upon. You can never go low. Nick, you uh, you talked about your advice for walk-ons. Um, what advice would you give to you know swing offensive linemen like your role last year? Um, I think Nick Cray is mm -hmm. going to be that guy this year. What's, I mean, what's your advice for that role? We just have to be ready for I think it, it's to stay ready because you never know. I never thought I'd go in uh, second drive of, or second or, third, second or third drive of Penn State. I didn't think of like I was going to go in. But I think you just got to stay ready and be ready. And that uh, goes through like the preparation and all that stuff that goes along with that. Is that easier said than done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what, what goes into – Staying ready. You, know, you just have to – and my role is kind of moving back and forth, like each side. So getting reps at right tackle, getting reps at left tackle. It's kind of just knowing what you have to do, what personnel. Like goes back to, like I've said, the, the little things. You just had to pinpoint those little things and it makes you stay ready. I'm sure growing up you were like the biggest guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you were pushing people around mm -hmm. and all that on the field and, and the lights. Uh, all of a sudden, you come here, and everybody's your size. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was that like? What, what kind of awakening was that? that it was uh, so when I first got here, I was 260 pounds, and that doesn't get you very far at uh, Division One level. So, kind of working in the weight room, gaining weight, gaining muscle, 
uh, it was just a it was a big transition because like I like you said you uh, moving people around pretty easy in high school and all that kind of stuff but here they're lifting too they're getting stronger so we talk about uh, hand leverage and pad leverage and that was kind of what I took to heart and you have to work on those things I guess it makes you want to get better real fast oh yeah Wait, yeah oh yeah There's different guys. They're offensive linemen, uh, bandits, defensive linemen, linebackers. So it's not like it's one position that plays it. Um, what's the mental, physical wrecks or makeup for someone to do that? I think it's I think it's all about trust because uh, I'm working with uh, Tyron Bradley right now and kind of it's just knowing him on like a personal level as well, it kind of builds that trust up and like we know what we have to do and – I think it all goes back to trust because if I don't trust them, I tell the coach, I'm like, eh, I don't know if you can do this very well. And, and then you mentioned a bad moment. What about a good moment? <laughs> good moment. Uh, let's see. It's always those one plays where the, the gunners bully the guy into uh, the returner and we get the ball back. Those are, those are always the highlights. How are you similar or different to Doug Nestor? More similar, different, different style playing tackle? I think we're different in ways. He was obviously a little, a little bigger than I was at that point, but I think mentality we were the same. We wanted to go out there and dominate and do our best like that. Maybe Doug more of a little brawler, maybe a little bit. More yeah, I think brawler type. I think it's. Uh, I could run a little better because I was a little more athletic in that kind of space and all that kind of things. But I think we're different in ways. Yeah. But obviously, the, the you can play the di position different ways and still be effective, right? Exactly. Yeah. Positives and negatives of being a Morgantown kid playing in your, you know, own hometown. Oh, yeah. So, well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are positives, but negatives too that you don't get to go away. You, you know, you, you, you're just where you ever you always have been. Yeah. So I'll start. I'll start with negatives. It was. Uh, I feel like there was always a lot of pressure, per se, kind of coming out of Morgantown and coming straight here. I felt like there was always a lot of pressure on me trying to perform well and everything, but. I always look at it as the uh, the positives, though, that I'm able to play in front of my family, in front of my friends, in front of my city where I'm from, and kind of put on for them and show them that I could do it. Okay, anything else for Nick? All right. Thank you.